G'day folks, welcome back to Aussie Outdoor Reviews. In this video, we are gonna be cold smoking some cheese. So, what do you need to cold smoke cheese? You don't need a lot. So, let's get into it. You need some cheese. I've got some vintage cheddar, I've got some Jarlsberg, and I've also got some Gouda. Now the Jarlsberg and the Gouda have got rind from when they cut off the cheese wheel. So, I'll be removing that rind, and I'll be putting the cheese on this grate here, just for ease of removing and adding it to the, to the barbecue while we're smoking. You're gonna need some wood chips or some wood pellets. So smoking wood chips, smoking wood pellets, you can get these from any hardware store, camping stores, all that kind of good stuff. This was about $12. I bought this from Anaconda here in Australia and this is cherry wood. So we'll see how that one goes today. And you're also gonna need a smoke tube. Pretty simple, this was $15 from Bunnings. So really, you're looking at under $30 to get set up to cold smoke cheese. I think that's pretty good. I think that's pretty attainable for everybody. Now, you're also gonna need a butane torch or a way to light your wood chips. So you could use a fire lighter, um, but I'm gonna be using my butane torch today. Again, this was about $35. So I use this outside to light my barbecues all day, every day, to light my Ozpig. If you don't have a butane torch, you better go out and grab one, especially if you love outdoor camping and cooking. It's a great little bit of kit. All right, so next thing's up. Let me trim these uh, and I'll bring you back. Okay, so I've prepared the cheese. Um, the one thing I'm gonna have to watch throughout this smoke is the, the tip of the Jarlsberg is quite thin, the end of the wedge, the tip of the wedge. So this may melt um, and I need to watch my temperature and I need to watch the positioning of this piece of cheese, specifically this end of it, um, you know, in relation to the burning smoke tube. So that's something for me to watch out for. The Gouda, that's got a, um, a, a thicker tip to the, to the wedge. It's been cut off um, already. So we'll see how that goes. And the vintage cheddar, I, I cut in half. So I am going to, um, I'm going to put this in the Weber. Um, now it's time to load and get the smoke tube going. So let's do that. It's gonna be interesting. I've never used this one in the Weber before. It, um, it will need to stand vertically or somewhat vertically in the very bottom bowl of the Weber. So I'm gonna have the, the vents of the Weber fully open, um, top and bottom, and I'm gonna be removing the fire grate from the bottom of the Weber kettle, and I'll be placing this directly in the bottom of the bowl. All right, I'll leave that to burn for a couple of minutes before I tip it over. Blow it out. Look at that, beautiful smoke. On with a cooking grate. On with the cheese, looking pretty good. Open my vent, and away we have it. Oh. -ho. She's looking good. She's smoking like a little beauty. Have it. That cheese has been smoking for a hour. One thing I did notice, when the smoke tube ran out of chips, um, it did spike the temperature. So I was able to catch it just in time, I think. Um, the cheese is a little brown around the edges, but a lot of that's from the smoke. So I'm not too concerned. Now it's just time to pat off the uh, excess oils and I will wrap it up in baking paper and put it in the fridge. So there we have the cheese. It's been wrapped up with grease proof paper, been in the fridge for two days, massive color change. It's much harder than it was before it went in the smoker, much harder to the touch. Um, and now we're gonna wrap it up in plastic wrap and we'll, we will put it in the fridge for another two weeks before we can taste it.